Okay, so uh, first thing, again, you always got to have a good picture of what's happening in these volume questions. So this is the gallery that I linked to our class website. So if you um, have forgotten that, it's uh, here over at the visualizing the methods. And um, I'm going to show you uh, this first example, which is the parabola, just to give you an idea what it is we're, we're actually talking about. So to view the animation, this is what we're going to do today. The shells are actually cylinders that we're going to be making. So like a hollow cylinder is what you're going to picture. So we make our partitions like normal. And the shell of this cylinder um, gets rotated around. Uh, this time it's a parallel bar. So if you notice, here's the y-axis I'm rotating around. This is parallel. The rotation is parallel today. Okay. So we need to think then, if this is the shell, we're going to add all these shells together. So let me show you uh, what you know. We start adding up a bunch of these pieces, one shell, two shell, and it would rotate all the way around, obviously, but just so you can see the cross section, it's kind of nice giving you the idea how the volume is generated. Um, if you added all these pieces up, and of course you use some calculus to make those slices as small as possible, then this is, this is the revolution you get, which is actually a satellite dish or a reflection for a flashlight, that kind of stuff, uh, as it rotates. So um, the key thing today, though, is that we're going to be looking at parallel rotation. So that rotation is happening. The bars are parallel to the, uh, what it's being rotated around. Okay. So first, uh, the, the theme is the same for all volumes in, in uh, what we do for calculus, right? We take the area and we add all the areas up, all the slices. So today what we're doing instead is, I can show you with this piece of paper. Um, if I take the piece of paper and I create a cylinder out of it, Right? That's a shell. That's what we're using today. So what we have to figure out is the area of that shell. And the way to do that is this is the diameter all the way around the circle, right? So the diameter is the width of this piece of paper when I unroll it. And the height is still the same height. So if I wanted to make it back into a cylinder, I just wrap it up by its diameter. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. The 2 pi r for the width and then the height. So that's how we end up with this formula here for the shell method. This is 2 pi r h, which is the area of that, of that shell. So we take our cylinder, the diameter when we unrolled it, this is 2 pi r, and the height. So That's how we get the shell of the cylinder, just the area. Now, what we're going to be doing, as I had mentioned, was we're going parallel today. So that is one of the key things that we're going to distinguish the shell method from the disc and washer. And you'll see I've got some examples on purpose that are set up. So um, you're going to have to ask yourself, you know, which one is better to use here? Is this question better for shell method or is this question better for disc method? Because it's not always going to be stated. Okay, but the two things that we need to find for shell method, it's the radius function and the height function. Okay, so those are the two things that we need to sort out when we are doing this rotation. And um, the difference here, uh, it'll become obvious when we do it again. I don't feel like it's worth you memorizing the formulas. What you should be remembering is you're adding up the area of uh, these shells, which is 2 pi r h, and that's how we get these integrals. Okay, so again, I, you know, you may like to memorize the stuff, but it's good that you just remember that's where it comes from. Just like when we add up the disks, it's pi r squared because they're circles. Okay, so can I go to the next slide? Okay, we'll give you a second. It's an emphatic no. It must be good notes then. Yeah. Don't change it. No, the coloring, the pictures. Yeah. That or you just want to hear your voice on YouTube, I guess. <laughs> okay. Or because it's our last calculus new lesson, it all feels good. So, um, okay, so let's take a look at this one. Um, we're going to start with a picture and then I'm going to set it up for you why the shell method is going to work better here. So the first one is a shell method question, but uh, I'll let you do your own picture. I'll catch up to you. So start with a picture 
and uh, we'll catch up to each other. Okay, so as always, again, you should be able to set up a good picture even if you're not sure where to start. I, when I do these volume questions, I don't even you know, think disc or shell. I just start with a picture and see where I end up. So uh, roughly, you know, I guess uh, it kind of looks a bit like this. It sort of comes up here, and then it makes a, whoops, then it makes a uh, sort of curve like that. And that's the area that I'm interested in. It's this region here. Now, the picture says that we're going to revolve this um, about the y-axis. So in my picture, here's where I'm going to make my, my rotation. Okay. And one thing that, you know, when we normally do integrals, um, we kind of have to pair up who we're integrating with respect to. So if we look at this question and we think, what would be the easiest integral to set up? Well, the easiest integral is going to involve the information I've been given, right? That's the information I have. It is a function in terms of x. So it would be nice if I had an integral in terms of x. You know, there may be some more stuff somewhere in here, like, uh, you know, some constants, some functions. We may mess around with it. But the bottom line is, this is in terms of x. So this is... Um, with respect to x, it kind of hints to us we'd like to use dx in our picture to use the information. So what way, vertical or horizontal, do dx's look when we do uh, our pictures, the bar? So dx, it's either going to look like this when it gets rotated, or it's going to look like this. Okay. So which, uh, which one is the dx, horizontal or vertical? vertical? Yeah, vertical. It's because the width, those slices are going to get thinner and thinner until they're that infinitesimally small width, that dx width. So the width here is what keeps shrinking down and down until I end up with just a single slice. So that's why dx is going to be for a vertical bar. Okay, so I'm going to go right back to the beginning. This is in terms of x. Okay. So if it's in terms of x, it will be easier for me to come up with an integral in terms of x. That means the bars I use are going to be vertical. Okay. So if I put a vertical bar in my picture, it would look like that, which means mm -mm, that doesn't work for disk method. It is no longer perpendicular because when it rotates itself around, it's now parallel. Okay, so that's what tips me off to this question is a shell method question. Okay, I'm rotating parallel based on the way my picture has set up. So um, let's set up our integral. In shell method, it is 2 pi r h that I'm worried about. I need a, ra a radius function and I need a height function. Okay, so the height is probably the one that you'll be able to pick out easy here. Now, you might be able to pick out both, but the height is similar to how we found the radius of our uh, disks. So what do you think here? If you envision this uh, disk here being rotated around, okay, what's the height of that shell that I've just created? How would you describe any old shell there? What would you use to do that? Yeah, this function here, right? X minus X cubed. This is the line x minus x cubed, so that means the height at any point can be given as x minus x cubed. Okay. I also need a radius function. So in my picture, this is the height of the disk. Right? The radius is when I spin this disk around, here's my radius. Right? You picture the disk spinning around, that's going to be the radius. So you may not see it, it's one of those things, sometimes when the, it's the most obvious, it's the hardest to see. But how far is that radius? Okay, which is just the value of x, right? Wherever I am, if I'm here, whatever that value of x is, that's the radius, right? If I'm here, that changes the radius to x. The radius is x. Whatever the x value, that's the radius of